Hello boys and girls. Right. The next little job is I've sold my uh, Bantam lathe and everything's okay with it apart from this one gear. Uh, if you'd, any of you would watched the videos I did when I made the gears you'll remember I made a slight faux pas. <laughs> uh, I set the dividing head up for a different gear than what this one is. This is uh, what's actually stamped on it. This is a 57 tooth gear and uh, I'd set the dividing head up for a different one and I didn't realise. So what had happened, I started to cut the gears, yeah 57, and uh, after I cut two or three teeth, I think I maybe cut three or four even, I looked and I realised the profile was wrong and then I stopped doing what I was doing, backtracked on everything, checked all my figures, all my figures was right, I uh, couldn't understand why uh, and then I realised then the penny dropped so to speak that uh, I'd got the wrong blank on. But anyway, shit happens as, it, as they say. So what I did, uh, I ground off the part of the gear blank where I'd made the me where I'd made a mess of it. And a mate of mine across the road with his MIG welder, and I didn't have a MIG at the time, he MIGged it up for me. And uh, when I come to cut this gear, uh, I'd started here, let's say. And I'd gone all the way around and everything was going perfectly well till I got round to here and I hit the MIG weld. Uh, it was a high speed steel cutter. Uh, I wasn't going uh, mad with it or anything. I was taking it nice and steady. It was on my old Harrison mill. I was set up horizontally and uh, everything was going alright till I hit the MIG. Uh, MIG weld is very, very hard. And... Uh, Consequently, it was bouncing and it wasn't cutting uh, properly at all. It was it was bloody awful, in fact. Anyway, I persevered and I kept going until I got the rest of them cut. And uh, but it was never right. You know, you run another gear around this one, and it get to this point, and it would push off because it, it wasn't correct. And it was something I'd been meaning to do for a long time, but just not got around to it. Uh, especially when I bought the Colchester Master, I kind of stopped using the Bantam. But the Bantam's under a tarpaulin, ready to go. And uh, I did tell the guy about this, and he said, Oh, yeah, well, no problem. But I think they want to cut metric and imperial threads. I can't remember what gear this is uh, needed to cut which particular pitch. But I know with this and all the other gears with the machine, you can cut anything he wants. So. My little job today, that's the arbor. I think this is the one that I'd originally done it with. So, yeah, it feels pretty good. So I'm going to mount this on the lathe. I think it's span on that tighten that up. I think. Uh, I've got a dry dog here, which we'll put on the end. It is centre drilled at each end, so we're all right with that. Uh, there's the other bit for my drive dog. I've got a centre here. I just had to put that in the lathe and uh, re true the face up. And then, oops, it'll be a case of uh, just machine the sides flat, machine the OD, and then I'll have to get the dividing head set up again on the milling machine and recut these few, these last few teeth so that they're spot on. So. Yeah. That's the job for this time. So I'll get to, we'll get on the lathe and see how we get on. Put a little bit of power on, shall we? <coughs> I meant to say a uh, big thank you, boys and girls, for uh, commenting the way you did. Uh, There'll be another video, get another video between then and now, obviously, but uh, I know my subs went up to 500, then it went, I think, to 516, then it dropped, and it's just gone straight back up again to 520, and I think that that was all helped because of the comments that uh, you was all leaving. Like I say, uh, just put OK or 
or toss it, but what you like. Right. But a comment's a comment, I think, in, uh, in the way of uh, YouTube and how it works. So it did seem to make a difference. So if we could carry on in that sort of vein, you know what I mean, just a few comments. Or just comment, and then uh, we'll see see how we get on. And something tells me now that that's not at 30 degrees. Right, well, let's just have a look at that. <sighs> right, we'll try again, shall we? So I'm after a 60 degree angle on here because that's pretty much what uh, all of all centres and that are made at. Uh, so if I set the cross slide at 30 degrees, as a lot of you will know, then the included angle becomes 60. So a few revolutions on the job. Looking at that centre, I was being a bit lazy last time, I only did the first bit, look. Oops, spot the mistake. Spin it the right way, you donkey. Isn't that amazing, the difference it makes? <laughs> set up and then uh, we will have a look. Right, I think we're about ready to rock and roll. Uh, turning between centres, what can you say? It's very accurate. Uh, keeps things concentric. There's only a couple of things really you've got to watch for. One, you've got this spinning round and uh, I'll bring it round look. You've got oh, that's not quite in the right spot, is it? This sticking out so you know you've got to be really careful with uh, with your hands and everything, make sure that you don't get anywhere near it. Because uh, if you've got that smacky on the back of the hand then you're gonna know about it, aren't you? So, so you need to keep an eye on that and then I suppose the other thing is uh, you're out of balance so you don't want to be spinning it at 10,000 mile an hour you know I'm going to run this uh, about 235 on the, on the gauge on the dial and we'll see what that goes like Put your hand on the machine you see, see if you can feel any vibrations through it. But that felt okay. Right, where's my uh, 
all these bloody tool holes, but I can never find the one I want. We'll go with a bit of high speed steel first and we'll try that to see what uh, see what she does. So I'm just gonna me headbutting the camera. So I'm just gonna touch off on there. There I'm a carriage. Back up a couple of thousand. And I think I'll just read zero. Then what we'll do is pull that round a bit. Look for what I think looks like the highest spot. It looks like it's about there. Tucked you up on there. That's where we'll start from, and uh, I don't think we're touching the. Uh, I don't think we're touching the dial yet, anyway. Right, uh, that's some feed on it. looking like it's out of, out of round because that catches your eye and also the, uh, the lump of braids as well. According to that, we'll not be far off on that one's uh, Take a little tickle. About another 10 power left to go. I just hope he's got enough graze on it. It's uh, going to look right. Right, that's back to our uh, zero. Although I did come back a couple of power, didn't I? So. on there so I think we'll call that one good. Right. So fortunately when I made the high speed steel cutters if you remember with our tool holders I made a right and a left you know. Out. And then come out a bit more. Another 
see there's a bit more to come off on this one. Twenty-one degrees in here. 
sound really humid and horrible. Right, now this should just about do it. Like point one of a mil maybe. Or maybe not looking at that. Tops of these, look. They're not there, so he must be just slightly off on that arbor. Problem here, Houston. I don't know whether the camera's going to pick it up. Yeah, you can see it. You can see the lines up with the steel. I asked him to grind them bits out completely and just braze it up. So that, for all intensive purposes, is MIG again, isn't it? So. I have a new high speed steel cutter, but the problem is I've only got the one, you know, gear cutter for that. And I'm a bit worried that that will chew the gear cutter up. I'll have to have a word with him and, uh, has he ground it? I'm just wondering if, they do look very narrow. I think I'll have a word with him first and just see if he's ground the middle because what he might have done, knowing him, because he's quite switched on, instead of grinding the whole lot out, I'm wondering if he's ground the middles to make them bigger than what they need to be and then filled them full of braids. Which I suppose, in a way, would keep more of the integrity of the gear, wouldn't it? Anyway. It's too late to do anything about it tonight. So I shall have a word with my mate and then... Uh, <laughs> that's always summer, isn't it? Always summer. <clears throat> so I've got it. Had it rebrazed. Got that side done, got the top done. We're just going to uh, finish up the inside now. Oh, nice and steady. Got about 40 power off each time.
smooth each side, no holes or anything. Got one little tiny bit there, look. I don't think that's going to hurt anything. Right, I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up with some emery before I take it off here and then uh, we'll get set up on the milling machine and get the dividing head on there and then we'll cut these teeth. Right, I think we're about ready to go. We're all set up. Uh, I've got it set just on that bottom, so we'll clean that one out first and uh, then we'll go from there. I've just been in the house to get my iPad and I think a wasp was trying to watch one of my videos and I didn't see it. I picked the iPad up and the little bastard stung me right on the inside of my finger. <laughs> right, let's have a go to it. And bring you in a bit closer. See if we get any vibration through the camera. Just taking a tiny little bit out. That one's got a bit of braid in it. So. if it's going to work because that is my old cutter I have gone around it with a diamond file and um, the issue is um, my mate Robin he bought me a set of uh, 16 DP cutters and they look spot on but the trouble is they take a smaller arbor and I haven't got one so we're going to have to just chance it with this one and see see if it'll do it I suppose give it a bit of your use Oh, here we go, we'll see what happens now. We're at full depth. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll lock, lock the white. Oh, there he goes. Let me find out what's wrong. Right, let's try again. The tail stop was loose.
see if I can move you boys somewhere else so you're not vibrating too much. Right, I don't know how this is going to work but we'll give it a whirl.
we'll see if it's moved. say my old Harrison mill when I made these gears originally and I used the uh, horizontal setup on it it was a hell of a lot more rigid got it did go well right I'll take this gear off and uh, I'll give it a bit of a clean up and I'll show you on the camera see we'll have a look see how it's come out I think it's turned out okay actually. Still wants a little bit more file work on the on the edges there. But that's a, a massive improvement to what it was. That one looks a little bit out, but it's not, it's where I've had the file in there. When you look at it from the other side, it's alright. So let me just dress these tops off a little bit more and then uh, I'll get it posted off to the guy who's bought the who bought the machine. He came and picked it up this morning and unfortunately I couldn't get it done fast enough to to give it to him when he went but uh, anyway at least it's done now. Just did it right wrong and Well, when I started I went through the first set of t the first four or five teeth of the cutter to make sure I was right. I think some of this is just where the where the braze is sort of rubbed over a little bit. Well anyway. Right. It's uh, quarter past ten at night and I'm knackered. And I'm injured because I've been stung. God, if I was a footballer, I'd have a month off with that, wouldn't I? So, time for a shower. Time for a cup of tea. Time for bed. We'll see you next time. Cheers.